In this video, we're going to be talking about how to properly service and perform an oil change on your Allison automatic transmission. So most of the videos I do are cat related and a lot of people ask for, hey, can you do Cummins or Detroit videos? Our shop doesn't really work on those that often, but I do do a lot of Allison services. Now, if you have a RV or a service truck with a C7 or a C9 or even a Cummins, most likely if it's an automatic, it probably has a Allison in it. And the most common Allisons were the two inch sump and the four inch sump with the dual filters and to get a lot of services done on those. So I figured to make a video on how to do it. Okay, hope you enjoy the video. So here I have an RV Allison transmission. And if you measure the sump, which is the bottom portion of the transmission, you'll see that it measures about three inches. Well, this is actually considered the four inch sump. The two inch sump measures only about an inch, inch and a half. So this is a four inch sump. And on the rear of the transmission, there's going to be a three eighths drive drain plug. That is the drain plug, not any of the other plugs. And then you have your two filter housings. You have one on the left and one on the right side of the transmission. And they're both interchangeable. And they each have six 10 millimeter bolts with um, 15 millimeter heads on them. So I have removed the drain plug, which is, you can use a 3 8 ratchet or breaker bar. And there it is, it seals with an O-ring and it even has a magnetic pickup on the end. So you want to check that for any metal. And you can see I've removed most of the bolts from these two filter housings, and I've just left one in. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and then show how to remove your filters. And they will plop right out. And after you remove these, you're gonna to wanna to let the transmission sit and drain for quite a while. It will drain for several hours. It'll keep dripping if you let it. So make sure you have your drain pan underneath because it's going to make a mess. And you just want to use a either a uh, screwdriver or a pry bar. And you should not have to apply much pressure to these filter housings. You just want to get, there'll be a recessed area where you can put pressure between the plate and the housing. And then your, your filters will plop out just like that. And then you're going to want to let them drain. So we have your new filters. This is a four inch, so they're gonna have the taller filters. And the two inches will have much shorter ones. You're gonna have two large round O-rings, two square O-rings. You're going to have two smaller, thinner O-rings, and then two very small O-rings, and two gaskets in the kit. And now I've removed the old filter and cleaned the filter of any gasket material. This is a hose pick. And this is a seal pick. This is a seal pick, the blue handled one. You will want to use a seal pick, and I'm gonna show you why. So we have your new thicker round O-ring. Most of these do not use the square O-ring unless you have a older style Allison. Uh, check the O-rings that are in it, and you know replace with what was in it before. So what I'm doing here is putting a little bit of transmission fluid on the seal. And then the larger, or meaning the thicker, round O-ring goes on the bottom. Just like that. Looks good, it's seated. And then you're gonna wanna use the thinner one and put a little bit of lubricant on there. Like I said, transmission fluid works well. And then you're gonna wanna use your seal pick. And you're gonna wanna work the seal around the small o-ring groove that's on this filter housing and then turn it just to make sure it has not rolled because if you roll the o-ring it's possible that it will get cut so those are both seated there's also an o-ring inside the filter there you can see and you just want to put a little bit of transmission fluid on there to help that seal properly and then you just kind of press it on and then roll it make sure it's seated properly and then you're gonna want to get your gasket and place it on there. And the Allison engineers are pretty smart. They use a gasket and an O-ring to seal the bottom and I've never seen one leak. So that's ready to go on. 
So here we have the sealing area for where the filter seats against the transmission. Now I've already installed the drain plug with the new O-ring and torqued it. And I'll be talking about the torque specs later. And if it hasn't drained for a very long time, it's going to keep dripping a little bit out of here. That's okay. I like to put two bolts through the filter plate to help keep the gasket from moving on you while you put it up there. Now, these plates are interchangeable. You can use the left or the right either way. But what isn't interchangeable is where they go because the bolt spacing is different. And you'll notice that when you go to put it in, you have to align them properly. And what I do is I just, like I said, I use the two bolts to help keep the gasket in place while I install it. And then you're going to run them up. And then you can put the other ones in. And you're going to do tighten them in a crisscross pattern. And I'm going to be talking about the torque specs here in one second. So here we have our sheet that you'll get with the filter kit. And you'll see that those 12 bolts torque to about 40 foot-pounds. I torque them to 40. And the drain plug only torques to about 22 foot-pounds. Now, that might seem low for a drain plug, but remember, it's going into an aluminum housing. And those drain plugs, I've actually seen them break before, so don't over-tighten it. 22 foot-pounds is plenty. Now, as far as refill specifications, uh, most of these transmissions are the MD3000s, and this is the 4-inch sump. And this is a refill after oil change. So it's going to take roughly 19 quarts, which is what's at 4.75 gallons. And yes, that is a lot of transmission fluid. And you can see if you have the 2-inch sump there, you'd only be putting about 10 quarts in. Now, I'm not going to show you how to put your transmission fluid in a fill tube because obviously that's pretty easy. Um, you will want to fill it up, though, and then put it in gear with your foot on the brake. And then put it in forward, neutral, reverse, neutral, forward, neutral, reverse. Just let it go back and forth and really purge that transmission of any air that might be in it after the service. Then, while it's still running in neutral, then you can check your dipstick. But if you don't want to use your dipstick and you're think you're pretty close to the right level already, I'm going to show you a way to do it at the shifter itself. So if you're in neutral at your shifter, and this is after the transmission has warmed up a little bit, I believe it has to be 140 degrees minimum, you're going to hold the up and down shift arrows. And then it's going to go OL, and it's going to start counting down very slowly. Now you should be on a level surface. The transmission should be warmed up a little bit. And the engine has to be running, and you have to be in neutral, obviously. And it'll count down. Now, this takes a few seconds. And it'll count down from 8 all the way to 1, and then it's going to tell you your level. So I'm going to skip forward here a little bit. So we're at 1 second left. Well, that's not really a second. And then it's going to tell you what your oil level is inside the transmission. So OL... Okay, that means the oil level is correct. Now on this little sheet here, you can see it might come up with something other than okay. It might come up with OLLO. That would be the oil level is low, and then a number. The number is how many quarts you need to add or remove. So if it said OLHI, that would be oil level high, and then how much. Now it might come up with a different code. Let's say OL70. That would be sump fluid temperature too low. So you would need to warm the transmission up slightly more. And the best way to do that is kind of put it in gear and then hold your foot on the brake and let it uh, bypass. That will usually warm up the uh, torque converter and warm up your transmission. So these are the st specifications for it to do the self-check. must be between 140 and 220 degrees Fahrenheit. has to be a neutral. Engine has to be running at idle. Transmission output must be zero. And the vehicle must have not moved in the two minutes. Okay, hope you guys enjoy the video.